Welcome to this. Today we are going to hear amazing testimony with our friends Justin and Brooke. And you will love this. If you come from a religious background or you come from the world, mm -hmm. you're going to hear testimonies of what a disciple life is all about. We are called to follow Christ. We are called to live the life we read about in the book of Acts. We are called to be led by the Holy Spirit, live a holy life, heal and say, cast out demons, lead people to Christ. Your home is your church. The bathtub is the place to baptize people. The kitchen floor is where you cast out demons. <laughs> and we are called to live this life. And God is doing something amazing right now. Many, 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 many people come from the world into this life. Many, many people come from the church, from the religious background into this life. And I want you to hear that testimony. And then I want you to be inspired and be a little jealous and say, hey, I want to live this life mm -hmm. because this is for everyone. That's mm -hmm. right. Can you tell about first how you met God? Yes. And then we want to hear about how this life is because for many people you can be in church your whole life you know right. without really never tasting what Christianity is truly about yeah. right. so what is your story uh, so I, I was born like you said in, in completely in the world no religious background whatsoever um, uh, my mother was uh, in high school when she had me so I grew up uh, with a stepfather um, <laughs> Everything, they were still, they were young, they were in their 20s, partiers, drinkers, that was what I grew up with. So by the age of 10 or 11, I was already being introduced into alcohol. By the age of 13, 14, 15, I was drinking heavily on the weekends and living that party lifestyle. Uh, my family moved from the north of the U.S. in New York uh, down to North Carolina, and immediately I could, could find those people. That was my people who I was, who, who I was looking for to party, and I continued that lifestyle through my teenagers. Uh, on into college. Um, in college, uh, it started to worsen where I started to get more involved in, in, in drugs and, and some heavier things like that. Uh, very promiscuous with, with women. Uh, and I was leading that lifestyle uh, that was doomed for destruction, but I was blinded and I didn't know. And it's funny because this is, that's where our, our, our paths crossed. And so I met her one night at a bar. Mm -hmm. So I was raised in a Christian home, religious home, and um, at eight years old, I would go to church camp and I would pray a sinner's prayer and I would give my life to Jesus. And for two weeks, I would read my Bible and then I'd go right back to my vomit. And I did this for 23 years. So how many times did you give your life to Jesus in a camp? Or in Probably a about 40 times, 40 times I prayed the prayer. And, and I just want to say to people out there, like you, you can... You can pray, give your mm. life to Jesus 40 times mm. and not be changed. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're living you in sin, truly, you're not saved. And then you can be truly That's born right. again. That's and, right. And then you'll change. So, That's right. so you came from that. That's right. So place. I did that over and over again um, until about 18 years old. I kind of just gave up on God and I, because I became very promiscuous with men. And that was my God at that point. Um, I pursued that until it failed me. And at 18 years old, I meet him at a bar. I had told God a few months before, I told God that I wasn't gonna be intimate with another man. Um, and for six months, I did really well. I was actually very impressed with myself that I had gone six months. And I ran into him at a bar. He was very attractive, I thought. And um, he, could, he got very intoxicated, he couldn't drive home, so I drove him home that night. Mm -hmm. And um, I broke my vow to myself and to God and I got pregnant with uh, our first son mm -hmm. on a one night stand. And I, that night that I left, I obviously didn't know I was pregnant until eight weeks later. And I had to text him and say, hey, do you remember me? And um, he said, yes. And that kind of is where our story began together. Mm -hmm. But I'll never forget the first time I hung out with him beyond being intoxicated. He said, I brought up the Bible and he said, what are the 10 commandments? And I'm like, oh no, I'm not supposed to be with a guy like yeah. you. So that's kind of where the journey began. Yeah, so we had been living with her mother at the time. So, so I would say the, mm -hmm. the funny thing, when, yeah. when you started the relationship, it was more on the base of, hey, you are pregnant, and uh, you, yes. you took responsibility, and it was not the love. Like, uh, you, you no. actually was not so excited by <laughs> no. it. No, I was actually very annoyed by him at first, yeah. Yeah, because he made you pregnant. Yes, and then, you know, I was mm -hmm. angry, very yeah. angry, yeah. So, so I would say no, no matter how, how, how your start is, mm. Yeah. God, He can really That's change right. it. And, and That's right. That's I would right. say it's not the typical uh, romance. That's you right. go to a bar, you have one <laughs> night, staying, you get pregnant. Okay, let's let's take responsibility. All right. But God mm. has done a lot. Yeah. Okay. Mm. That's right. That's right.
Hey guys, we are back again and look, we have amazing little baby boy ah. there. <laughs> so uh, we, uh, uh, the other song, he was taking care of him mm. and and, uh, and he was missing the fellowship here. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we will continue now mm. with a baby in the hand. That's right. That's right. So that was at that point in our story where we had a baby. Yeah. Uh, it was our first son, not our fourth. Right. Um, but at that time, uh, I remember walking down the hallway in my mother-in-law's house and um, we, had, we were not married or anything like this at the time. My son was about eight months old and I remember hearing something in my heart and I had never heard something. It was almost audible, but it was a voice speaking inside and it said, if you continue to walk down this path, it will lead to destruction. Mm -hmm. Now, the funny thing is, is I've, I had never opened a Bible at that point. I had never written, writ, uh, read a verse of scripture or anything. And this voice continued for like two to three weeks and it was almost haunting. And I had been visiting a Baptist church uh, by, kind of forcefully <laughs> um, every other week or whenever uh, my mother-in-law could get me to go. And so, but I knew that this, this pastor would do an altar call afterwards. And this particular Sunday that I went to visit, I didn't listen to the message. I was just waiting for this man to call people to the front because I knew that this was God and I had to, I had to make a decision. I had to do something. So this, the service ends and he doesn't say a word. Mm -hmm. So I chase this pastor down. And I say, listen, I've got this voice telling me this. What do I need to do? So uh, he does what a typical pastor would do and leads me in the center of prayer. And, uh, and I, I was baptized a week later and I was truly repentant at that time, as far as I could understand, but uh, there was no mention of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. There was no mention of the power of water baptism and the separation from the old life. So I, even though I didn't want to sin anymore, I struggled and struggled mm -hmm. for a few years. That's right. So now he's, I remember he came to me and said, guess what? I gave my life to Jesus. I was like, good for you. Never worked for me. Hope it works for you. And three years into, at that point, well, we had been dating and now we're living together. We're not married. And but he still hadn't read a Bible yet. And he says, we got to get married like tomorrow, no. um, pretty much. And so we took two weeks. He lived with his grandmother. I stayed with my mom. We planned a wedding and in two weeks we got married. Uh, and about three years after we were married, he had been reading his Bible at this point and he came to me and he's like, I know you said you were raised in church, but your life does not add up to what the scriptures say a disciple of Christ is. And I was highly offended by that because he was pretty much calling me a fake. And it took me a moment and all of a sudden I had this aha moment, like he's right, I am a fake. And if I was to die right now, I'd not meet the Jesus that I said I know. And um, so he said, we can change that right now. We're just gonna ask him to come and forgive you of your sin. And I remember I started to pray and the presence of God came in that room and it felt like something started at my feet and it was pushing my sin out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking to myself, my husband's going to leave me after I say everything, because but I couldn't help it. It was just coming just out. I was confessing everything, things I'd never said out loud before. And um, I remember at that moment, just the weight of the world felt like it had just been lifted off my shoulders. And I looked up and I remember seeing Jesus as real as you are standing in front of me. And he said to me, it's now or it's never. You've played games with me your whole life. So you must surrender all to me now, or I will turn you over to a place of reprobated mind where you no longer will feel the drawing of my spirit anymore. And I knew how serious that was. And that at 23 years old, if I said no, my heart was hardened to a place of no return. Um, so at that day, I surrendered my life to the Lord and my whole eyes were open and changed. I knew there was more. I knew it wasn't just at repentance I needed to stop, but that I needed to, there was something else I was missing. And I remember I was reading scripture. I could barely go to work because I just was so mm -hmm. enthralled with Jesus. And I was reading the scriptures and one day I was crying out, I need more, whatever I am lacking, give it to me. And at that same moment, that same presence that was in the room the night I repented came upon me and it came in me and I started to pray in tongues. Mm -hmm. And it scared me because I was raised in a Baptist church growing up and they told me that gifts were not for today. They had ceased. Tongues are not something that you do. If it is from, if you do get that today, it's from the demon. And I was terrified. So I started to rebuke this beautiful gift that had been given to me until I started to read scripture. And I started to see like, no, 
this is the evidence that I am sealed and I have received the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And this is something I should be doing constantly. And so when I would get into prayer, I would do this and I would not tell anybody because I knew they would judge me mm -hmm. for it. So I didn't tell my husband, I didn't tell my friends, and I just started to pray in the Spirit often. If, if we talk about the Spirit, it's interesting when, when we talk about when Christ was mm -hmm. on earth, uh, the Pharisees were studying scripture That's daily. Right. And when he stood in front of them, they crucified him. They That's couldn't right. see. They were so blind. That's and, right. and the, and the level of the Pharisees was destroying so much That's and right. hindering people in receiving Christ. That's right. Now Christ is not on earth anymore. Mm -hmm. He's in heaven, the Holy Spirit is down here. Right. And it's the same religious spirit, the uh, Pharisees, right. the, mm -hmm. that hinder people actually receiving the Spirit. That's right. And, and it's interesting because now, like before they're like, hey, we want God, we want God, we want God, and mm -hmm. Christ was in front of them and they rejected Christ. Yeah. That's right. Now he's in here, the Spirit is here. Hey, we wanted Christ, we want we don't want anything to do with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's right. And the Holy Spirit's main job is of course to talk about Christ and, and mm -hmm. reveal the truth and the word. But Jesus said it's the best for you that I go away. That's and he right. commanded the disciples to remain in Jerusalem until the promise of God. That's and right. I would say to many religious people out there. Go to a player room, remain mm. there and until you until receive, you receive the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. That's right. Because it just make a difference. That's like right. my father-in-law, he was he was a leader in a church, small church. He was mm. staying behind the pulpit and preaching mm. for years. Mm. His wife then one day received the Holy mm. Spirit. Wow. And then later he was like, uh, mm -hmm. but then he received the Holy Spirit. That's right. And it just changed everything. everything. That's right. That's and right. it was the same with you. That's right. And as soon as I received the Spirit, I started to hear the voice of God in a way I had never encountered before because it was within. It wasn't yeah. this external yeah. influence. It was this internal <laughs> influence. And I would hear things and I would tell my husband and they would happen in people's lives or I'd pray things that he would tell me to pray and they would take place in someone's life. And I would lay hands on sick people and I would see him healed and the whole time I'm thinking this is just normal and my husband's over here like please stop this it's making me very it uncomfortable. It made me very uncomfortable because oh. I felt like 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 faith was in the room and my lack of faith mm. uh, was 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 encountering that and it made mm. me just want to leave. But you were in the, the world at that time a lot also mm -hmm. before. Yes. You, yes. Were, you, yes. were, you were te teaching in the yeah. church. You yeah. had been on seminary or was mm -hmm. that before? Yeah, no. So it was around this time I started to notice that. I knew I was lacking in my relationship with God and in, in, in my mind in order to get a better relationship with God I needed to study Him. Okay. So that's why I went to Bible school and I thought when I come out with this Bible degree, I'm going to know God and everything is going to change. Mm. Well, I got that degree and nothing changed. Mm. Actually, I just became indoctrinated with a bunch of things that again gave me a religious spirit and made me even more resistance to what I was seeing in her. It made me more uncomfortable. Mm. That's when she began to pray for me. I didn't know, but in the closet, she was praying for me to truly encounter God and receive the Holy Spirit. That's right. So we prayed and um, about four years of prayer. One day, um, a friend of ours invited us to go and do some prayer with a group of people at a ministry. And when we got there, this man approached me and he said, you're hungry for more. And I said, how did you know? He's like, the Lord told me there would be a couple here that want to receive more of God. And I said, well, I have been crying that out for myself and for my husband. Let me go grab him. So I grabbed Justin and very reluctantly he came over and I'm like, this man wants to pray for us. And um, so he laid hands on us and my husband encountered a radical encounter. My logical mind at that point was was offended. was completely <laughs> offended because what I what I felt was uh, something like electricity beginning to run through my body like a current, and in my mind I was just no this is not real am I having a heart attack and my mind was just going 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 and then all of a sudden I started to pray in tongues, mm. and then all of a sudden the power became more and 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 I didn't just fall out on the ground but I began to slowly go to the ground I felt like a, a a bl this blanket of peace was coming yeah. over me. And later, you know, when, in time with the Lord, did He reveal to me that I was both delivered and filled with this, mm. the Holy Spirit mm. in that instance. Mm. And the way I knew that again was the fruit. Mm. I, after 25 minutes of being face first on the floor encountering God, I stood up and I was a completely different person. Mm. There, was a, there was a boldness, there was power in my life. And up until that point, I had been teaching in a youth ministry. <laughs> I had been sharing sermons, I had been leading small groups. Mm -hmm. And I could, could listen to a sermon or a podcast and regurgitate that, and it would sound so amazing. Mm. 
but not one single life was being transformed. Mm -hmm. The fruit of that was not there other than people saying, great job today, That's you right. had a wonderful That's message. Really, it was this really point beautiful. when I received the Holy Spirit that yeah. everything changed and power yeah. began to manifest yeah. through my life. And I remember I would share things at church or I'd get up and have a word for people and people would come up to me later and be like, you have no idea how accurate that was. Yeah. And I would see their lives starting to change because simple things I would speak into their life and they'd be like, call me for advice. And I'd invite them over to our home to be a part of life. And, mm -hmm. I, and he'd come home from work and I'd have four teenage girls there discipling them, talking about being mom and following Jesus. And, and he came to me one day, he's like, why are you so fulfilled in your life with Christ? I said, because I give out everything I've been given. Mm -hmm. And all you know is about him. You don't teach others to follow him. And at that point, our life started to change. Yeah, so we had felt called to the mission field before this. And, and so we did. We went and we traveled for a couple of years and learned uh, much of what to do and much what not to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so our discernment was built. Um, but one strong thing we, we learned was uh, how Christ functions in different cultures mm -hmm. and how communities of faith come together and express mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And when we came back to, the, to, to America, we noticed that we would leave and we would be obeying Jesus, pursuing God. And six months later, we would come back on fire. And the people that we left were still sitting in the same churches, uh, in, the, in the buildings, in, in the same position, with the same struggles and the same sin and the same thing. And we began to get, get upset, like, why, why aren't people growing? And this is when the Lord began to speak to us. And he said, it's because you're not equipping them. Mm -hmm. You're not actually showing them how to do it. You're just sharing the testimonies with them. Mm -hmm. And so this is where everything kind of shifted and changed for us. And we were meeting with individual couples um, on a weekly basis, but we noticed that they all had the same questions mm -hmm. and they were all hungry for the same thing. So we said, let's, let's bring them all together in our home and begin to truly disciple people and teach them and train them how to obey Christ in their lives. And that's what we did. Yeah, and we started to disciple them and teach them First of all, what is real church? What does the Bible say church mm. is? Yeah. Um, and what does it mean to actually obey Christ? Because mm. it says, if you love him, you will obey him. Mm. All of you say you love him, but you're not obeying him. Yeah. So are you a true disciple? Mm. So we started to dig that out. And a lot of them got born again <laughs> in that group. Church people. Again. Yes, church people. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. They were being repentant. They were being baptized. They were being set free. They were receiving the Holy Spirit and, and things like that. And instantly these people were going out sharing what was going on in this little home and as we're reading the scriptures and they would go out and share those testimonies and people were like we don't really know Jesus and they were baptizing people immediately hmm. um, I remember I remember, yeah. I remember actually reading Hebrews 5 and hmm. hearing uh, the writer of Hebrews 5 say I would love to go on to further things but I cannot mm. I have to give you milk because you're not ready for solid mm. food and going on to the end of that chapter he said the the ones who are mature are the ones who actually practice the word of righteousness right. and they're they actually skilled in it and so we recognize that and began to see that in Hebrews 6 it talks about these foundational yeah. elements of faith so that's exactly what we began with mm. we, we said we're gonna bring foundation. I don't care if you've been in church yeah. for 5 10 20 50 years we're gonna start with the gospel we're gonna talk about repentance faith water baptism and receiving the Holy Spirit and we're going to figure out where everybody's at. Mm. Once everybody was truly born again and had walked through repentance, had received the Spirit, had been delivered if they needed freedom, now they had the, right. the, the foundation to actually move forward. Where most of the church we recognize wanted to go on to deeper things and deeper knowledge, but they had not received the foundation, and so it was faulty and it was crumbling. Um, uh, so when, when, when people hear uh -huh. your story and how the Holy Spirit came uh -huh. and everything, uh, some people call it like revival, or some people say, whoa, you are very lucky, it's for mm -hmm. a few. I, I call it normal Christianity. That's right. That's right. Like it's, it's just how it should be. Okay. Yesterday we had a couple coming, and I, I pray for them, never met them before. And, and just a normal day, we lay hands and pray for them. And mm -hmm. suddenly God came, like I started to prophesy over them. They broke mm -hmm. down, both of them was crying. And, and the wife said, we have been in church in 20 years. We have never experienced anyone who read our life like this, like yeah. prophecy mm -hmm. into detail. That's right. And I love it. Mm -hmm. I love right. it when God comes like that. That's and, right. and for you out there, I'm, I'm giving out a new book. Um, I'm, I'm finished with it coming out, beginning new year, The Call of Jesus. And I have different chapters where I go through all the things we actually talk about. Mm -hmm. And one of the times in the book, I would say, if you are in a church, I would then say, are you in church? 
where they are not used to repentance, baptism, water baptism, the Holy Spirit. In the book I say, then start with the gospel. You That's always right. need to start with the gospel before mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. move on to other things. Start with that foundation. And then I said, but if you are a pastor or leader in a church where they have built on this foundation, who believe in repentance, baptism, water baptism, the Holy Spirit, then also start with the gospel. Mm-hmm. Because just because you are in a setting where you actually believe in those things, mm-hmm. don't mean that people have understood it. That's That's right. Right. Don't mean people have really understood what repentance is, baptism, water baptism, the yeah. Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think it's so important. That was exactly what you, you have been doing. Yeah. You mm-hmm. took the time and by that discovering that some people you maybe thought was born again was not. That's right. right. Yeah. Even Jesus told his disciples to wait yeah. <laughs> until they had received the Spirit yeah. because then they could actually become witnesses. And we realized that with the first group that we started, once they received that and they were stable and they had the Holy Spirit and they had the power, then they had the ability to not do something but become witnesses right. in their sphere mm-hmm. of influence. Mm-hmm. And the beautiful thing was that naturally and organically those groups began to multiply because we were uh, equipping people to take what they had yeah. and share it yeah. with mm-hmm. other people. There was one instance where we were doing a water baptism with one of the people in the first groups and we uh, had actually gone to a, a, asked to use another person's pool. Um, now, when they witnessed that and they heard us preach the gospel and water baptism, those people actually got in the water and said, we need this. Mm. And so and it went from two. one of them was two, a worship leader at a mm, church. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> And yeah. so these are all people who grew up in the church, some of them leaders, some of them uh, serving in ministry positions. Yeah. And they were getting in the water because they, they had, had never understood the gospel mm-hmm. like this. And they were experiencing God and they later received freedom and received the Holy Spirit. And so people were witnessing something different in the gospel that we were, we were preaching because it was actually transforming lives. It wasn't just talk, but there was power. And, right. and, and, and when it happened like that, also the multiplication happened so much faster. That's yes. right. And they multiply who they are. That's not right. a church building, not a program, but they multiply who they are. That's yeah. right. And everyone can do ministry because there are so many platforms. They happen That's in the right. homes, they happen where people meet, oh, yeah. they're baptized in the pool, or baptized yeah. and so on. Mm-hmm. So the last just last year when you have been doing that how, how much growth have you seen mm. from that mm. uh so in about 18 months we've seen about uh eight or nine Fellowship. house fellowships mm-hmm. birth yeah. out of that original yeah. one yeah. Um, yeah. um we see a lot of one-on-one uh discipleship and meetings um but all of them mm. no matter whether we're meeting in a group mm. starting or we're meeting one-on-one mm. start with the gospel mm because we've recognized that most of the time people are lacking in bearing fruit is because of one of those pieces Mm. are missing because Mm. we've divided up the gospel into Mm. different parts. Mm. Uh, They've not received a portion of it or they were unaware of a portion. Uh, I was in a home a a small week ago, five days ago, and and what we did in the home and what I encouraged people to do, we were like 15, 20 people. Mm -hmm. Most people, church people, there was a pastor and other people there. What I started with, I said, okay, let's, let's sit down here. And I took the table and I shared the gospel. I used the cards to share the gospel and mm-hmm. talked about the kingdom of God from beginning to the end. Talked about mm-hmm. sin and, and Christ and what he did and repentance mm-hmm. oh. and the new birth and, yeah. and, and obedience and follow him. And when I laid up the whole gospel, then there was some few Christians. And mm-hmm. it was so easy to answer the question because now they have the full the picture, full picture of right. it. What was interesting there, because many was, there were some people new and they did not know each other. At one time I asked, who, who won prayer? Mm. And, and no, people were looking at each other. So I, okay, let's play a song. And then we just went from person to That's person right. and said, okay, instead of asking who won prayer, what do you need prayer for? Yeah. And we saw deliverance, people got healed. One woman uh, got set free and, and she uh, spoke in tongues. Mm. She discovered she had never baptized, mm-hmm. took her to a repentance mm. talk. Fill up the bathtub, came in, the woman in the house pray, baptized her. She got the Holy Spirit spoken tongues at the mm-hmm. same time. Yeah. A deliverance happened in the kitchen. Yes. That's right. And I'll just say, I love it. Yeah. That's right. Like, yeah. like there's so, something real in that. There's that's something right. real in being in a home because it's, 
It's, it's like you are living, yeah. living right. this life. It it's has, a safe we, place. We've seen it yeah. kind of break down denomination walls yeah. um, because it's not just the people in the charismatic circle that are being affected with this. Because we're going into the homes and it's built on relationships. Right. Right. We're seeing people from Baptist backgrounds, from Pentecostal backgrounds, mm -hmm. from Methodist backgrounds, mm -hmm. Lutheran backgrounds. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. because we're in their home and there's not uh, this weird thing that we're in. Mm -hmm in this, this, this building and we have to follow these certain rules. And if you share the real gospel to someone and they do have a demon, they manifest. Mm, yeah. The real gospel, I was in a Starbucks sharing the gospel with a lady and she starts to manifest and is like, I think I'm gonna get sick. And I'm like, yeah. well, let's go to my car, bring a cup so you don't puke in my car. <laughs> and she gets delivered of unbelief yeah. in the yeah. car of a Starbucks yeah. parking yeah. lot. Yeah. I mean, this is the yeah. gospel that sets yeah. you free. Yeah. If you preach the real gospel, he will show up. Yeah. I always tell people, if you're in church and you're hearing a gospel being preached and no, God is not affirming that message, yeah. I worry about the gospel that you're listening yeah. to yeah. because he will affirm it through showing yeah. up in a sign of wonder yeah. of power and freedom. It's Corinthians, Paul is talking about chapter mm. two and four, I think is, is he talking about he came not with word That's only right. and word of wisdom, That's and right. Right. human wisdom, but yeah. power. Yeah. Yeah. Demonstration, That's Demonstration right. of power and, yeah. and uh, God, yeah. Mm. If, if we just um, so it's really about encrypting people. Mm -hmm. It's about building people up, mm -hmm. and it's about setting people free, and they start to do ministry, and then it grow from from relationship to relationship, That's and right. suddenly you have a, a church there, a family yeah. there, mm -hmm. and and you know some of your families, church family, what we mm -hmm. call it. Uh, is now starting the next generation right. somehow independent on you, mm -hmm. and it's just growing, and this is the kingdom. That's right. Yeah. The kingdom is like the small. Eat, eat right. uh, seed, mm -hmm. land it in, and, and so on. And this yeah. is what we are seeing. Can you share one testimony before we stop about some of the transformation in a person's life and how mm -hmm. they've gone from there? Mm -hmm. um, so we went, I went to a baptism one day with a woman. Uh, a lady friend had invited me to go to baptize this woman, and there was a few people there, and her husband was there. And anytime we do a baptism, we share the gospel, no matter how many times they think they've heard it. So we share the gospel with these, these people. And this woman said, I'm ready for this. I know I'm bound by depression. I've been on antidepressants for 20 years. Mm. She said, I stopped taking them two weeks ago because I knew I needed to be baptized and I wanted to be clear minded so I could get free. So she gets in the water and we baptize her and instantly she comes up and she starts to manifest. Mm. And her husband, who is a state trooper, who has a very logical mindset, is sitting there watching his wife thrash in the water and scream. And it took about 10 minutes and the woman gets free and she gets filled with the Holy Spirit. And I looked at him and I said, are you okay? Do you have any questions? Because I know this is very new. Mm. And he said, I think I'm all right. And I said, okay. I said, well, if you have questions, my husband can answer them for you. And we leave. And a couple of days later, I get a phone call from this girl and she says, my husband was at work and he was sitting in his car and he was so overwhelmed by what happened to me. And he's seen the change and how I don't need medication anymore and how I'm not going crazy every day and crying mm -hmm. him all the, mm -hmm. at crying all the time. And she said he was in his car and he said, if this is real, show me. And he gets filled with the spirit in his cop car mm -hmm. at work. And his whole life has changed since then. So a couple of weeks after that, I had mm -hmm. spoken with him. He gave me a call and he said, I, I had pulled over this lady. There was a, there was a car accident that took place. And uh, one of the men that was involved in the car accident was actually a heroin addict at a really struggling two weeks prior to that they had found him uh, lifeless in his car and had to bring him back to life and in this moment he handled the situation a little differently now filled with boldness and filled with the spirit when this man said i don't know what to do i'm, I'm addicted to, to heroin my life is in shambles mm -hmm. he said i know exactly what you need mm -hmm. you need freedom in mm -hmm. jesus christ mm -hmm. you need mm -hmm. jesus to set you free and he said you know what i've never i've never done this before but i know somebody who has so he gives us a phone call mm -hmm. and and we actually set up this meeting where we we came in a bunch of us guys with him in his home and we share the gospel with this man he looks at us and he said i've been to different churches but i've never heard the gospel so clear in my life and i understand what you're mm -hmm. saying we then walked him through repentance and allowed him to repent towards God. He did that and we baptized him and uh, he was delivered, gave his life to Jesus Christ and uh, is now being discipled. So all through those relational uh, testimonies. Yeah. When, when Jesus received the Holy Spirit, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, he has anointed me mm. to proclaim the good news to the poor. Mm. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, mm. to recovering of sight for the blind and to set liberty those who are oppressed. Mm. 
Jesus is in heaven, we are on earth, we are his body, we okay. have received the same spirit. Yeah. We should be able to say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. To proclaim good news to the poor. Yes. <laughs> to proclaim, uh, send me to set people in free, mm-hmm. freedom and mm-hmm. healing and all of that. And, mm-hmm. and that is, a, it's just the Bible is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have, we, we, we are, we have another uh, video with you, another mm-hmm. testimony with you, where we want to go more into details about how it looked like with, when we talk about those churches, house fellowships, uh, and how we can start it. I have a book coming up called The Call of Jesus, where we, I talk so much more about it. Mm-hmm. And this is the future. This is what God wants to do. We, we right. want to see it all over. So we encourage you to see the other video. Uh, it's a video that will come up very soon. And uh, see that, follow the channel and we will come with much more about it. Oh, amen. So, receive the Holy Spirit, That's right. repent, you experience that. a new life, That's right. and see you next time. Amen. Bye-bye.